Hello lovely people and welcome back to this week's new video. Today, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be talking about my favorite books of quarantine. If you're new here, hello, my name is Noah. I am a bookish and lifestyle vlogger, born and raised and still based in New York City. And if that sounds like anything of interest to you, I would love it if you would stick around and subscribe if you so please. I'm still quarantining at home. I only leave the house when like absolutely necessary, which is very very rare i as an introvert don't really feel the need to be outdoors during this time at least this video felt appropriate to do now because now new york city has completed its phases of reopening there's no such thing as phase five so it just felt right to do this now and if i waited till the end of the year i would just end up with the favorite books i've read in 2020. In total during quarantine I've actually read over a hundred books already. I think it might be closer to 120. My goal for this year is to read 150 books which I have now surpassed by like one. So I feel really good. I've been reading an absurd amount each month in quarantine, about 20 plus. I've been reading like there's no tomorrow really. I've been struggling a little bit with picking up physical books. I've been reading a lot of lot of audiobooks. However, six out of the seven books on the, my list for today are physical books and only one of them is an audiobook. Now the books I plan on talking about today, they're just in the order that I read them. So they're not like a ranking by any means. Getting started with the first one, this is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. This is a short story and I gave four stars. A young woman, she is our narrator, we do not know her name. She works at a fraudulent business reading people's auras. She is just really keen at reading human behavior, but she makes money out of this. And she has one client who she is trying to squeeze more money out of and visits her home as a way to figure out what is causing her stress and her trauma. When the narrator arrives at her client Susan's home, she realizes just how bad everything is. It sort of seems like the old Victorian home that she is living in is haunted and her stepson, her teenage stepson, is creepy, truly disturbed, possibly a little bit sociopathic. Although this was very short and I am not one for short stories at all really, this left me wanting more and I docked it a star only for that reason because I wanted more. I was hooked from the very first line of the book. It had me laughing but also kind of creeped out and I really enjoyed this. My next book was a five star read and I read it during the stay at home reading rush and that is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I gave this five stars. I feel like this isn't of any surprise because this is a mystery thriller which is absolutely my favorite genre. This book is sort of in the style of a whodunit, a little bit like like a Agatha Christie. It's told in six different perspectives. Guests are invited to a remote island off the coast of Ireland. The groom is a up-and-coming reality TV star and the bride is an ambitious magazine publisher. At the wedding, someone turns up dead. I really enjoyed the six different perspectives. I feel like maybe since there are six different perspectives, it might be easier to pick up as physical book. Although I did hear a preview of it on um, Reese Witherspoon's book club Instagram account and I really like the narration. I might try to pick that up. I am someone who likes to try to figure out what's going to happen so that never really ruins the story for me if I am able to figure out the ending because even when I do figure out the ending like I did with this one, I am still shocked because I don't know the whole story. I read this in basically one sitting and it was impossible to put down. The next book on my list is a book that I have also talked about many times and that is The Happy Ever After Playlist by Abby Jimenez, which is the second book in her Friend Zone series, I think it's called. I also read this earlier this year before quarantine, but it was my favorite book of February and this was my favorite book of March, May, April? But anyway, it's I cannot talk about the plot of this one without talking about without ruining the plot of the friend zone. I actually enjoyed this one more. I gave it five stars opposed to this one, I think were four or four point five. So this book is following Kristen and Josh. Kristen wants to have a medical procedure that will help her immensely, but it also means she won't be able to have children. And then in comes Josh, who is the best man for her best friend's wedding and they kind of don't hit it off at first but they have really great banter. It's sort of like a hate to love. Josh 
comes in and you know he wants a really big family someday and Kristen knows that so that sort of complicates their relationship. Ah oh my god and I really wish everyone would pick this up because I loved it so much more. Holy crap. It's kind of impossible saying that this is like a really good book and one of my favorites of the year so far because I can't talk about what it's about. The next book also shouldn't come as any surprise. This is Riley Sager's Home Before Dark. This is his fourth book. I also while writing down my thoughts for this video found out that Riley Sager is actually a pseudonym. Fun fact of the day here. This book is following Maggie. 25 years ago her and her family moved to a house in the woods of Vermont called Bainberry Hall which was a really old mansion and they only last about three weeks before they flee this haunted house. Maggie's dad Ewan writes a non-fiction kind of memoir book recounting their time in a haunted house. Upon Maggie's father's death, she inherits the home and she restores homes. I think she's like, she flips them. So she wants to sell this house and goes there to do so, but also to sort of figure out what happened in her childhood. She experiences some creepy experiences Wow, that's amazing. Experiences, creepy experiences, amazing. And she doesn't really know what to believe anymore. In classic Riley Sager fashion, this book was told in two different timelines or like perspectives, I guess you could say. One was Maggie's and the other was her father's book. You're sort of able to figure out for yourself what you think is real and what's not and sort of piece together the puzzle from there. This book was really really creepy. I'm not a huge believer of ghost things like 98% of the time. It's just when you're scared, you know, your mind plays tricks on you. I do believe in like spiritual things, but that's a different thing. I think the part that creeped me out the most was the snakes in this book. I absolutely hate snakes and there's a part where um, they find a nest of snakes and at night I could just feel them crawling on my floor and like up on my bed and I absolutely hated that but like that's the effect this book had. It definitely kept me on my toes and I didn't really see the ending coming. I think while I was reading it I was starting to figure out what happened but of course just like with the guest list I didn't know the entire story and that just made it so much more amazing and I loved every second of this. I think these next two also don't come as a surprise. I read this one during Romanceathon, and this is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Five stars. This is most definitely an adult romance with a lot of smut. I know that people who are avid romance readers have like different scales of smut that they can tolerate. I love a lot of smut, so if you do also, this is perfect for you. Adult romance is also one of my new favorite genres. So this is following Chloe Brown, who has a chronic illness and she witnesses an accident and she kind of like sees her non-existent life flash before her eyes. And she's like, this is a problem. My chronic illness is hindering me from living my life to the fullest and I need to do something about it. So she creates a list of things that she wants to do, I guess, before she dies. And she's not really good at these kinds of things. So she recruits Red who is her like superintendent of her building to help her and this was just a really good time. At first I found Chloe Brown to be an absolute rich bitch. I found her to be kind of annoying but once you get to know her you see what kind of person she is and I actually grew to like her. Red on the other hand you can tell he is such a sweet guy from the very beginning but the thing is I just never found him to be good looking which I feel like I've said way too many times in my videos but his personality makes up for it a hundred percent and I definitely believe in like falling for someone because of their person personality and not because of their looks and it just makes for like the relationship the development to be so much cuter also for my reading vlog that i'm actually doing this week which will be up next week i'm reading the sequel which is take a hint danny brown following chloe's sister i think this will be a trilogy because there are three sisters next up i also read during romance plan which is the two lives of lydia bird by josie silver i bawled reading her first book one day in december and i absolutely loved it i was so happy that i enjoyed her second book anyway this is following Lydia. On the night of her 28th birthday, her fiance Freddie died in a car accident and she is grieving and she falls into a bit of a depressive state and she doesn't really know what to do with herself but she knows that Freddie would have wanted to have a full and happy life even without him so she tries her hardest but there is something she can experience where she can continue having her life with Freddie. She really wants to pick that except that there are these new changes in her life that 
might allow for a new path of love. She's sort of conflicted on what to do. I think this book is marketed as a little bit of magical realism, which I will say don't read into that at all. I don't think that exists. And a romance book, which I think was kind of a mistake. I would say it's more of a contemporary with a little bit of romance mixed into it, but I loved this. I loved it in a very different way than One Day in December. I cried while reading this book thinking about my own grief, and I really liked that this book also, like One Day in December, took place over a long period of time so that you could really see the different stages of her grief and how Lydia was processing that. And the last book I have, I I read it during the reading rush as well is Normal People by Sally Rooney. It wasn't even a question of whether or not I should add it to the list. I mean, I do have other five star and four star reads that I have read during quarantine, obviously, but this list was just books that I knew that I would absolutely recommend. And this I recommend to everyone. I will shout it from the rooftops. I think this is a huge contender for a favorite book of the year. I really, really loved this book. This book is following Connell and Marianne and they'd run into very different crowds at school. Connell is like the popular kid and Marianne is the loser. She doesn't have any friends. Everyone thinks she's weird and people kind to make fun of her for that. But Connell and Marianne are forced to talk because Connell's mom works as a housekeeper in Marianne's home. There is an immediate sort of connection, really great chemistry, and a bond there. Flash forward to like a year later, they're both studying at Trinity College. This book is very character driven, so definitely don't go into it looking for like a clear cut storyline because it is mostly just for Connell and Marianne and their friendship. And it's a very melancholic tone and once you get to know the two characters you'll definitely understand why the book is written this way. You'll definitely go through a huge range of emotions like you'll fall in love with them, you'll be really angry, definitely frustrated and like sad and confused and I think that the Hulu BBC show did a very very wonderful job of adapting this book and I highly recommend that. Also I am absolutely in love with Paul Meskel and Daisy Edgar Jones. They are my celebrity crushes, no one talked to me, okay? Just, yes. I adore both Connell and Marianne and I think it'll definitely be hard for you to enjoy this book if you don't like the two characters or come to understand them in this way. I hated the ending of this book, but I couldn't dock any stars for it because I could completely understand where it was coming from and why Sally Rooney chose to do that. Also, in regarding the show, Sally Rooney said that Paul Meskel is exactly who she imagined for Connell, so I think that is an amazing high praise. The show was nominated for multiple Emmys, so please go check it out. Reading this book, I definitely have a newfound appreciation for melancholic toned books. Regardless of whether or not I gave it five stars, I definitely have a huge sense of respect for them. A friend of mine actually asked me for some recommendations that were sort of set in the same tone. And I would say like Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, very much character driven, I came prepared. And A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I would also say, I don't know where my copy went, but If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin, which I also read recently. And An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. Those are definitely the ones that are at the top of my recommendation list regarding the books sort of in the same tone of this one. I love a good fluffy romance, you know, with the happy endings, obviously, but sometimes, you know, those just don't seem really realistic and it's a really great escape, but books like these ones that don't leave you with that clear-cut Hollywood happy ending make you realize like that is the reality of life, the real shit that happens. Not everyone gets that happy fucking ending and there's nothing you can do about it. Stories like that, like these ones and characters like these ones are the ones that stay with me for longer. Like these are really great and happy, but you know, these are the ones you have for life. Uh, this is always the problem with like thumbnails, right? Trying to figure out something like this. These are all the books that I have to recommend for my time in quarantine. I hope you are still all staying safe and healthy, wearing masks and social distancing and remembering that you can't just be thinking about yourself. We're all in this together and um, happy reading. I hope you pick some of these up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did and also subscribe. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I also didn't address, because I, I didn't put in a, blog, a vlog that I got 
my hair highlighted. I didn't love it at first, but it's kind of growing on me because I wanted it to look more natural and have it be brown instead, but I might just keep it for a little bit longer.